morning, everybody. Good morning, and thank you for attending uh, today's introduction, being here for what is a very special day for the Mets organization. We want to uh, welcome all of our live audiences here today, whether it's social media, whether it's on television, whether it's via radio, but uh, thank you all uh, for your attendance and for those watching uh, all over the, uh, the general area. So at, uh, at this time, I'm going to begin by calling Mets General Manager Brody Van Wagenen to the, uh, to the stage for opening remarks. Thanks, Harold. Uh, hard to believe it's only been one year since I stood at this room. It seems like it's been a dog year, seven years. But uh, Well, thank you, Harold. Today, we are thrilled to officially introduce Carlos Beltran as the new manager of the New York Mets. <laughs> Carlos's wife, Jessica, his daughters, Ivana and Chiara, Chiara and little Yvonne Carlos, who we just, uh, just had a little spill here this morning, but good to see you're doing all right, buddy. Uh, Carlos and Jessica, welcome back to the organization. Kids, we are very excited to create new memories for you and your dad here at City Field. So I want to take a couple minutes to talk about the hiring process. Over the course of the last month, we completed a thorough and extensive search. We considered, vetted, and ultimately interviewed a large group of candidates. They were highly qualified, and they came from very diverse skill sets and diverse backgrounds. I'd like to thank our ownership group, Fred Wilpon, Saul Katz, and particularly Jeff Wilpon, our COO, and the entire ownership group for being patient and supportive through the process. I know it took a while, we were detailed, and we wanted to make sure we got this right. I'd also like to thank our many members of the baseball operations staff who dedicated countless hours to this process. Specifically, Omar and Allard Baird, thank you guys for your introduction to Carlos. These two gentlemen have a very long and successful history with Carlos. I'd like to also recognize Adam Gutridge, Jared Banner, Ian Levin, Harold Kaufman, and Jeff LeBeau for their preparation, their commitment, and their detailed due diligence. Lastly, thanks to all of you media who were incredibly respectful and understanding of our discretion throughout the process. We wanted to maintain integrity for our, for our candidates and for our organization. As we narrowed the list, we were impressed by the many strengths of the candidates. Many of these gentlemen will ultimately make very good managers as they go forward. We have no doubt about that. The decision wasn't easy, but there are five things that stood out about Carlos through the process. First, he's poised. As you've seen, Carlos can command a room when he walks in. He has presence. He has patience. Least of wit and at very least, he's got confidence. Next, number two, Carlos is trustworthy. When we began this process, it was important for all of us in the ownership group and the baseball operations department to feel like we could exhale when we walked into the manager's office. We didn't want to inhale in anticipation of the conversations. Instead, we wanted to feel comfortable, we wanted to feel welcome, and we wanted to feel a partnership with the manager. We can trust Carlos, and that goes a long way. Third, Carlos has a growth mindset. That's a cliche and a very common sentence in the, uh, in the marketplace today, but it particularly applies to Carlos. Carlos is a learner. Carlos knows what he doesn't know, and he's willing to acknowledge it. Most importantly, Carlos has a curiosity to learn more and to grow. He's evolved. He used that word quite often during our, our process of the interviews. He's evolved as a player. He's evolved as a husband, a man, a parent and we think he can apply all of that knowledge to us going forward. Number four, Carlos is committed to beating his opponent. Why do I say that and why do I make that a point? Everybody wants to win, there's no doubt about that. Most coaches show up every day with the belief that they can try to get the best out of their players. 
Carlos has those two attributes, but he also takes it a step further. Carlos wants to beat his opponent. He looks at the little things. He looks for tips. He looks for any weaknesses that he can exploit in his game planning. He did it as a player, and we know that that's going to be a, a key part of his success as a manager. And fifth, most importantly, Carlos has an unrivaled appreciation and understanding of players. So let's talk about that. Carlos's hiring is a signal and an affirmation that is clear and loud to this organization's core tenets of being a player's first organization. We're players first here. Carlos Beltran will be a player's manager. Over the course of his 20-year career, Carlos won the Rookie of the Year Award, three gold gloves, two silver sluggers, and was named to nine All-Star games, five of which were here with the New York Mets. Additionally, Carlos played in 65 postseason games, over seven different postseason runs. And in 2017, Carlos became a world champion. Over the last year, Carlos worked for the New York Yankees as a special advisor. In this role, he served as an important bridge between the front office, the coaching staff, and the players. Carlos has an extremely high baseball IQ. He has an appetite to collaborate, and he is a mentor, and he's a communicator from the 25th man on the roster to the first, from our veteran players to our minor league prospects. He cares about improving each player in that clubhouse. When we put all this together, Carlos's experience, combined with his personal attributes, will give him instant credibility in our clubhouse with the players. It will give him instant relatability to the players in our clubhouse. Carlos has lived what our players are living right now. Carlos has traveled where our players hope to travel over the course of their careers. He has faced and he has overcome adversity amidst the highest of high expectations and the most intense pressure in sports. So now a message specifically to our loyal and passionate fan base. We at the Mets know that you crave and deserve a consistent winner. We won 10 games over 500 last year. We were 10 games over 500. It's progress, but it's just the beginning. Our commitment is to do more. Our commitment is to win championships. Your new manager, Carlos Beltran, has led teams over the last 14 years to 12 winning seasons as a working professional in baseball. 12 winning seasons in his last four years working. Carlos is a winner. Carlos came here to win. We brought Carlos here to win. And together, with your fan support, we will be a winner. So with that, congratulations to Jessica, your family, and Carlos Beltran. On behalf of the entire Mets organization, welcome home. COO Jeff Wilpon will uh, come forward to present the jersey and cap. Good. A few more seconds. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Brody. Carlos, the stage is yours. Well, first of all, Brody, thank you for being so kind uh, in all those words. Uh, honestly, for me, uh, I feel thankful 
for this opportunity. Uh, first of all, I would like to always, as a player, I give the glory and the honor to God, and uh, and I want to do the same here today. Uh, I want to thank God for this opportunity. I'm very blessed uh, to be standing up here in front of you guys as the new manager of the New York Mets. Uh, I want to thank Fred Wilpon. I want to thank Jeff Wilpon. I want to thank some cats, Brody, Omar, Aller, uh, for allowing me and believing in me uh, to run this club uh, in 2020. I also want to acknowledge people that are here today. I want to, my wife was very supportive to me throughout 20 years as a ball player. And the fact that she's uh, willing to do this again, uh, being a manager of the New York Mets, I appreciate you. Mommy, thank you for your support and everything that you do for us as a family. I want to acknowledge that here today is my, my three kids, uh, Ivana, uh, Chiara, and Evan Carlos. Love you guys. You guys are the, the world to me. And, uh, and as a dad, I'm proud to have kids like my kids. Love you, baby. I also want to thank uh, and acknowledge a, a good friend, friend of mine, uh, throughout 22 years that uh, basically allowed me to learn uh, the city uh, of New York and fall in love with the city. Joel Oaks, I love you, my brother. Um, well, uh, I'm overwhelmed, a little bit overwhelmed by, by this opportunity. But at the same time, I'm excited, uh, looking forward to manage this ball club, looking forward to continue to establish relationships in this city. Um, throughout 20 careers, 20 years of career as a ball player, I was able to embrace the game of baseball. Uh, like Brody said, I was able to go through a lot of places and learn from different organization. And a lot of times I ask myself, uh, before I got to this point, what kind of manager I want to become. I want to become a manager that uh, motivate my players to play at a higher level. I want to be a manager that bring positive to the clubhouse, a positive environment that allows to to show up every single day with the mentality of winning ball games. Uh, I did that as a player. I took a lot of pride into being a good teammate when I was a player, and being a manager won't be won't change at all. You know, I just feel that I have more credibility to to motivate the, the players and, and to be there for them in the good times and in the bad time. Uh, saying that, I know that being a manager also bring all the responsibilities. And, uh, and as a player, I was able to, to have those tough conversations uh, with teammates uh, to push them to continue to, to fight uh, for what I believe they, they could have done in the, game, in the game of baseball. So having those opportunities and those conversations when I was a player, there's no doubt that uh, they're going to allow me as a manager to do the same. Um, before I continue, I would love to say a few words in Spanish. Uh, para la gente de Puerto Rico, este, para mi papá y mi mamá, bendición. Uh, I love you guys. Uh, este, los quiero mucho. Gracias por el apoyo que me han brindado para la gente de Manatí. Los quiero mucho. Este, es un privilegio, una bendición poder estar aquí parado eh, y poder representar a, a Puerto Rico ¿verdad? y a los latinos a través del mundo en, en esta plataforma como manager. A mis jóvenes eh, de la escuela de béisbol, eh, los quiero mucho. De verdad que sigan trabajando duro, luchen por sus sueños y honestamente... Eh, Eh, todo es posible. Así, si, si yo pude lograrlo, eh, pónganse en eso claro en su mente que ustedes pueden lograr lo que ustedes quieran. Así que los quiero mucho, Puerto Rico. Muchas bendiciones y espero verlos en abril en Puerto Rico en la serie que estaremos jugando allá. Así que muchísimas gracias. So, continue, continue with everything. Uh, I'm sorry, I get emotional because when I, when I talk about the kids from, from my academy in Puerto Rico, uh, I, I could see in them uh, the passion and the desire that they have to, to accomplish their dreams. So basically, I'm, I'm saying that fight for your dreams. And you know, if I was able to accomplish uh, having a, being able to have a good career and be in the position where I am today, there, there's no doubt that anyone out there can do it. So 
Um, like I said, thank you. Thank you. I want to thank everyone uh, for this opportunity. I'm excited. Uh, looking forward to what is ahead. Uh, there's going to be uh, baseball is a roller coaster, guys, and uh, and I know that this uh, will be the same. But I'm I'm excited, uh, and I just want to say to the Mets, uh, thank you for believing in me. Uh, I just can't wait uh, to rewrite our story, uh, being the manager of the New York Mets. Thank you so much, <clears throat> Carlos. <clears throat> We're going to have uh, Brody uh, take the stage now. Before we provide direction on Q&A, let me recognize three individuals, special individuals that are here with us today. <coughs> Queensboro President Melinda Katz. <laughs> Our local council member, Francisco Moya. <laughs> and of course, our majority leader, State Senator Michael Giannaris. Thank you all for not only attending today, but for your continued support. So with that, we're going to have mics on both sides of the room. Please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation prior to your question to benefit our live audiences also at home watching. So with that, uh, we'll go over to, uh, to my right, uh, Steve Gelbs. Uh, Steve Gelbs, SMY. Carlos, I actually have a question for both Carlos and Brody, but Carlos, we'll start with you. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you. You thanked your wife for her willingness to go through this again, and clearly this is somewhat unique when it comes to a, a player of your caliber wanting to jump back into this grind, uh, especially just a couple seasons post-retirement. What was it about managing in general that drove you to pursue this the way that you have? Well, for me, the, the passion that I have for the game of baseball, uh, the passion that I have to pass forward, the things that I learned in the game of baseball, I do believe that uh, it's important. You know, it was important. It was my call to, to pursue this opportunity. Uh, and I'm just excited. I'm si excited to have uh, these conversations with, with our players and being able to impact them uh, and impact their careers in a positive way. And Brody, for you, clearly there were there – were managers with significant experience that were available you clearly felt confident enough to to go with Carlos who has no managerial experience what specifically was it about him in the interview process that made you believe he would be able to jump right in and have the level of success that you're looking for well I think Carlos has experience and he has life experience um, when he sat with us in the room it was clear that he had an element of consistency every time we spoke uh, he knew what the mission was, and it's to win. It's to win games. Um, he knew that that was going to come off the foundation and the support of players. And if our players perform, we win. And Carlos understands these players in a very unique way. And as he talked to us, he, he indicated he wants to serve. At this point in his life, he wants to serve. Serve the community, serve the players, and serve the Mets fans. So that, was, uh, that resonated with us and, and ultimately helped us make the choice. Rich on the same side. Congratulations, Carlos. Rich Catino, 98.7 ESPN. Communication is such a big part of managing today. And knowing from covering you, you always dealt with us in a very direct approach. What will your approach be with the players? And Brody, how did his communication skills and his really good skills impact this decision? Well, first of all, I think communication is everything, you know, and especially in baseball and in life itself. Uh, so I'm looking forward to have conversations with the players and sit down with them uh, one by one in spring training. Before that, I want to have, I want to be able to call them individually and find out from them. I need to get to know them, uh, what is important for them, what are their passions, and what motivates them. So if I'm capable of doing that, uh, there's no doubt there's going to be an easy job for me uh, to press those buttons uh, when the season starts. Bruce. Second part of Rich's oh, question. Please, Brody. Uh, Thank you. Rich, Rich, I think it was the sincerity. You know, obviously, he's been in the limelight as a player. He's, uh, he's obviously stood in front of many of you in this marketplace. But, but at the end of the day, it was Carlos's authenticity and, and his sincerity of his communication that we felt like would have the greatest impact with our, with our players in our clubhouse. Bruce, go ahead. Bruce Beck, WNBC TV. Carlos, congratulations. What is your message to Mets fans who respect you as a player? but question your lack of experience as a manager? Well, there's no doubt that there's things that I, I need to continue to grow in this game of baseball. 
I have a lot of experience as a player. I understand that uh, experience as a manager is something that I have a good group of people around me uh, to support me through the process. Uh, so I'm excited. Uh, I have a, a lot of mentors out there that have reached out to me uh, to help me in the process. So I'm just looking forward to what is ahead. Natalie, in the middle, in the back. Carlos, felicidades. Si no puedes dar tu respuesta en inglés y español, por favor. Eh, haber jugado en este mercado por ambos equipos de Nueva York, ¿cómo tú crees que eso te va a ayudar en este nuevo rol? Bueno, jugar en Nueva York, eh, por supuesto que ayuda. Ya entiendo la cultura, entiendo el sistema eh, de juego y las expectativas. Yo creo que eso es algo sumamente importante. Eh, y me va a ayudar también a pasarle ese mensaje a los jugadores que también muchas veces las organizaciones firman eh, que traen de mercados eh, más pequeños a mercados grandes, pues es un ajuste. Yo me puedo, puedo sentarme con ellos y puedo explicarle situaciones que, que pasan en el juego. Go ahead. Zach Gelb, Mad Dog Sports Radio. Carlos, congratulations. My question is for Brody, though. You talked about the thorough process that you did go through. When you were evaluating the candidacy of Joe Girardi, what made him not the best candidate for this job with the experience that he could have brought to the organization? Well, I think, as I said earlier, there were a lot of qualified candidates that brought different things to the table. Um, I think that, you know, we we considered all of those candidates and their strengths, and and ultimately it was Carlos's strengths that won the day. It was less about um, where other candidates fell short, and and much more specifically about what Carl Carlos's leadership uh, brings to our team, what le what his leadership brings to the organization, and we had a great deal of confidence in that. Bill. Carlos, congratulations. Uh, Bill Latson, MLB.com. Carlos, I'd like to ask you, what do you like about this Mets team? Um, just just what, what you think about them. Well, I think we have a good ball club. Uh, there's no doubt that we have to work hard in spring training uh, and focus in areas that we didn't play well last year. So, But that's uh, everything started with uh, creating the environment. For me, what is positive about this is just I just want to create an environment in the clubhouse with the players that uh, they feel happy to show up to the ballpark every single day and give their best. So I'm excited with, uh, with, with the players that we have, with the pitching staff that we have. So it's going to be a fun year. Tim? Tim Healy from Newsday. Carlos, when you spoke in Houston, when you spoke in Houston last month, you were clear that your past disagreements with the organization were there in the past and you weren't sweating that anymore. During the interview process, did you broach that with them at all to just clear the air, or was it not even discussed at all? No, it wasn't even discussed. Honestly, I think uh, what we leave uh, the organization and I, you know, it's in the past. I would not be standing here uh, if everything wasn't clear uh, with, uh, with the organization. So I'm excited to be back. Honestly, uh, it was a situation that uh, I was able to move forward, and I personally believe that you can't progress in life if you think in the past. You have to be able to be conscious and live in, in the present moment. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Brody. I know there's other questions, but we're going to have one-on-one -on -one opportunities. At this time, uh, I'm going to ask, uh, we're going to have a photo session real quick with uh, Carlos and his family. Carlos is going to remain on stage for the TVs to gather your group here by the stage with the backdrop. Riders, if you'll put yourself in radio to my right. And uh, we will uh, be with you uh, shortly. Thank you all again for your attendance.